A Magic of David Copperfield. Starring David Copperfield. With Carl Valentine. Valerie Bertinelli. Sherman Hemsley. Bernadette Peters. Orson Welles. Cindy Williams. David Copperfield was born in Metuchen in New Jersey in 1956, and when asked about the birth, his magician parents said, we were hoping for a bunny. <laughs> this did not discourage little David, seen here making his first business deal. <laughs> David is seen here at magician's camp with his first female assistant, who later went on to score a personal triumph as an end table in the touring company of Waiting for Goat. <laughs> Finally hired for his first big tour, the fledgling magician spent weeks rehearsing his birds. Unfortunately, it was not a success, and the young Copperfield was forced to eat his act. <laughs> Here he is being given an award by his fans from the Elizabeth Barrett Browning Look-Alike Club. <laughs> and there he is, never content to rest on his laurels, David Copperfield continues to devote every waking hour to the constant improvement of his craft. That's why I do match. Thank you. 
Good evening. Tonight's show is going to be special. We have great guests who, in addition to being very talented as we know them, all have one very important thing in common. They love magic. Oh, by the way, all the magic performed on the show tonight is uh, being performed live. There's absolutely no camera tricks whatsoever. You know, uh, when I was growing up, I often wondered what it would be like if life were like a Hollywood musical. Well, tonight, we're going to do our own salute to those fabulous movies. We're going to call it A Date with a Magician. And the stars will be a magician and the girl everyone would love to have next door from Laverne and Shirley, Miss Cindy Williams. The story will be a simple one. Boy meets girl. Boy takes girl on date. Boy cuts girl in three pieces. And she's now living in New York, Chattanooga, and San Diego. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we proudly present A Date with a Magician, or Divide and Conquer. <laughs>
concern is that something is going to go wrong with one of his illusions. Well, my next celebrity magician has never had that concern. He knows something's going to go wrong. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, currently appearing at the Paramount Theater with Glenn Miller and his orchestra, <laughs> here is the classic comedy of Carl Ballantyne. I got her as soon as I could. My first one, let's have all eyes on the basket. Jada, Jada. Oh. Not bad for the first, huh? Only the beginning, only the beginning. <laughs> How else? Sit back, relax, the kids are faint. Here's the plan. First, it's going to be the simple tricks, and I move into the more difficult tricks. But first, the simple ones. <laughs> I'll show you acupuncture. The magician. Cuts the piece of rope in half. Two pieces. Ta this kid's dynamite. In the box. Where do they find this kind of talent? Simple trick of sticking the two hunks of rope back together again. Keep your eyes on the two hunks of rope. <laughs> Don't get mad, only way I know how. <laughs> and there it is, cleverly done to get. Whoops, wrong rope. <laughs> Always when you want to be a hit. <laughs> okay, who played around with the stuff back there? I'll tell him what happened. I ain't afraid. Some crumb back there cut them both. What do you think? I am a magician. Who's the wise guy to stuff the chicken in a basket? That ain't too funny. Remember him, the old classic rubber chicken? A little applause. Get dressed. Here's one. There's another one. Nice, you snuck in. Here's one I saw another fellow do it one time, where he made use of a sheet of paper and your kind attention. Fellas whipped the sheet of paper very neatly. Mm. <laughs> yeah, just passed the way. Used to be a chicken plug. <laughs> too much money, but you meet a lot of groovy chicks. <laughs> ah, that's important. Who wants pimples at my age? Into a small package. Made a few magic passes, and then they restore the sheet of paper. There's a trick I wish I could do. <laughs> They're catching on. No magic, just a charming personality. Let's see what's happening with the rope. Hey, good, good, good. They're getting close. Getting close. <laughs> now, here's the one you've all been waiting for. No, it's not my last one. I'll tell you when. <laughs> the rabbit from the top hat. Welcome to America. Hugh passes over the hat for the old dusteroo. Inside the hat. What happened to the thing? Inside the hat. I'm right, gonna wash that close. The trick is off. I don't know. Oh, I'm back. I'm a trooper. Inside the hat. Peter, the little tiny bunny. Get ready, Pete. I'm coming down. Smile for the. Oh, what the hell are you guys trying to prove out there? Oh, this takes a lot out of an artist. All right, so don't bother me too much. <laughs> I'll give him the big one now. I'll make the whole audience disappear. <laughs> there they go, Tina Sabi. <laughs> a little few car tricks for you I recorded a few months ago. A little disco number, it might catch on. <laughs> I hope you like it. <laughs> Whoops. I uh, bet you think I can see through this, huh? You're darn right. Fifty-two cards. <laughs> Playing cards. What do they think of next? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Always take the blindfold off. See if the audience is still here after that one. And um, you probably wonder what I'm going to do next. <laughs> I'd like you to welcome two celebrity magicians who are going to create a really unbelievable illusion for you. Here are the stars of One Day at a Time and the Jeffersons, Valerie Bertinelli and Sherman Hemsley. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I've got to ask, what first attracted you to magic? Well, for me, it was the way the magician would come out with an air of mystery surrounding him and hold the audience spellbound with everything from the simplest sleight of the hand to the most eloquent display of the mastery of illusion. And how about you? The female assistants. 
Just wait until you see what we have in store for you tonight. That's right. It's going to scare you. Horrifying. Turn your hair gray. You're going to show more of my baby pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's just say it involves a very beautiful girl. And an old lady. Well, why don't you hurry up and get into your costumes? And... Good idea. This is going to be terrific. I found the most important element in performing magic is the building up of suspense. That's why one of my greatest influences uh, was the master of suspense himself, Mr. Alfred Hitchcock. Now, could we have our beautiful girl and old lady, please? Excuse me, but aren't you supposed to be wearing the dress and uh, you the towel? No, 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 no. I want to follow in the footsteps of Garbo, Dunaway, and Hepburn. And I want to follow in the steps of Harlow, Monroe, and Welch. <laughs> Why don't you get ready? Ladies and gentlemen, here are our celebrity magicians to do the spine tingling, blood curdling shower scene from Psycho. <laughs> Thank you. 
first worked with Cindy Williams about a year ago on a magic show, and since then, well, she's become very interested in the subject. So it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce our next celebrity magician, Miss Cindy Williams. Maybe that's quite enough that you got there. Thank you. It's my magician's outfit. I was wondering. I've done a lot of research into the field, and I've discovered a very interesting fact. What's that? There has never been a famous woman magician. Come on, there must have been. Name one. Well, there was... You see that? Well, I've decided to change all that. Tonight, you are going to witness the debut of the great Cindini. <laughs> what do you have in store for us, oh, great Cindini? Ah, funny you should ask, David. Actually, it's what I have in store for you. You see, a woman magician approaches magic from a different point of view. For over a hundred years, the male magician has always sawed the female assistant in half. Well, that's very true. Well, I do it differently. Differently? Yes. Tonight, I'm going to saw the male magician in half. You're going to what? Oh, you're going to love this, David. I do it lengthwise. Lengthwise? Yes, and you want to know what else? No. You want to hear the best part of all? No. I do it with a chainsaw. A chainsaw. <laughs> Couldn't you use a safety razor? No, I want my first effort to be stark and realistic. You know, a real slice of life. A magician, a magician mm -hmm. has always sought the woman in half. Well, times have changed, Buster. Right, girls? Right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You fabulous assistants, you. Now, haven't we always had fun together? No. <laughs> Hold it. Now, isn't there, uh, any way I could make you change your mind? No! <laughs> it's a far, far better thing that I do than I have ever done before. Let's get ready to slice this ham. <laughs> You, uh, you might have noticed by now, I'm a big fan of movies and music from the past. That's why it's a special treat for me to introduce my next guest. With the unique magic of her own, she can transport us from the present day all the way back to the 1930s. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Bernadette Peters.
lie with new ambition. Spring is in the song. Soon you find yourself a vision. Days were not so. program of magical illusions. For contrast, I will attempt not a magic trick, but an experiment in that new frontier of human knowledge still referred to as the paranormal. The secret is sealed and locked into this block of ice. Now, in a serious experiment of this nature, if we use people from show business, uh, you, you, you might suspect a little trickery. Now, this lady and gentleman have just been picked at random from the studio audience during the last commercial, and choosing them was a matter of pure chance. Uh, isn't that true? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Will one of you please uh, take the telephone and call some person you know anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world? Just dial the number. Uh, but there's one condition. There's one condition. You must be certain that your friend or relative is home to answer the phone now. Huh? All right. You see, I'm sorry. Our time is limited. So if you aren't positive, we'd better enlist somebody who is. Please take that ball you're still holding down to the studio audience and throw it over your shoulder so that we'll know whoever got it uh, uh, is fairly chosen. It's the same way we picked you, remember? Same method of enlisting. Whoever does catch it must please be absolutely certain that somebody somewhere, anywhere, is near a telephone right now. Throw it over your shoulder. Come up on the stage. Give him a hand, will you, please? Thank you.
I'm right up on the stage. That's right. You're thinking of a friend, someone you're sure will answer, so dial the phone number, whatever it may be. Now, all of our books over there have more than, what, 600 pages? So first, we'll need a page number between one and seven. Hello, Aunt Trudy? Yes. Yeah, I'm on television now. You're on television? Yeah, and uh, there's a whole audience watching me. And you're supposed to pick a number between one and 600, was and it? And six. One and six. Pick a number between one and six. Five. Five. Five, good. Now, any number between one and 100? Pick a number between one and a hundred now. Uh, ninety-nine. 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 What is the number? Five ninety-nine. Thank you very much. Will you, sir? Uh, you, sir, write those numbers up on that board. When you're done, you can stand guard over the ice block. And you, please. You. Please merely think of a number. Don't even write it down. Just make a picture of it in your mind. Fine. Now, uh, give an ice pick to this young lady and you, sir. Will you please go over there where the books are, at that chair there? There are a lot of books. See the chair? Sit down on it. That's right. A lot of books. Mix them all up, will you please? All over the table. We've got cameras watching us from every direction and to prove that the books are in no special order. Now, shake your fingers like this, will you? Right. Put your hands up. Now, put your right hand on a wrong book. That's your choice. Put it over there. Now then, take three or four or five books and put them away. Any wrong book. I'm not going to influence your decision at all. Put them away. Any one of them. All right, I'll want more if you want or not. Whatever you say. Now, we have two books. Will you put... One hand on one wrong book and one hand on another. You're sure? You don't want to change your mind. No, that's Put them good. both away. Now then, spread the three books out here. I couldn't have influenced his choice, could I? I've made no attempt to. Now then, your left hand is your heart hand, isn't it? Yeah. Right. I want you, with your left hand, to touch the right book and with your right hand, touch the wrong one. Put that book away, the wrong one. Now, are you absolutely positive? You know which of these two books is right and wrong? I guess so. No? <laughs> yes, I'm positive. Then throw that book away. Good. One book out of 12. I like your spirit. <laughs> I will pay $10,000 to anyone who can prove there's any sort of arrangement between us or that that person on the phone was in any way arranged with, and that's dead serious. Same camera. I'll say it to that camera if you want. Okay. You have your ice picks. Start chopping. You have a jar there. It's the kind of, well, in every one of the books, first of all, I must remind you of those big books, there are at least 300,000 words. 12 books makes, what, 3,600,000 words, and we want one single word which has been frozen into that jar. It's a heavy glass jar, the kind they use to seal preserves. Will you open the seal and take out the capsule? <laughs> it's been sealed into thick plastic wrapping. All right. Take out the capsule. And uh, with your scissors, there's some scissors there, will you cut the thick plastic wrapping, which was wrapped around it to keep out the moisture. We did that some months ago. Now, will you pull off the sealing lid, the, uh, the wrapping from the... Uh... Right. And now you take the top off, will you? Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're the lady, aren't you, who has been holding a number? Follow me. Keep your eye on this, please. Follow me. All right. You have held a number in your mind only, is that right? Is it still there? Yes. And you were the book. The person you telephoned gave you three numbers. What were they? Five. 
Nine. Will you turn to that page? How many lines are there in a page? At least 20, aren't there? Now, this lady's been making a picture of a number in her mind. In order to... Uh, have you told that number to anyone? Have you spoken it aloud or, uh, or written it down? You have yeah. not? No. Then for the first time, let's hear the number you've just been thinking of. Six. Count six lines down. Now, we don't want a common two or three letter word uh, like if and and but this or that. Uh, so take the first word on that line which has well, more than five letters. The studio audience will bear witness that while our camera shows the detail of that operation, I do not touch the paper which has been unsealed from that block of ice. Once again, I give you my word that what's going to happen now, if it does happen, has never before been attempted on television or anywhere else. The word, please. Operating. Hold the base of that, please. Operating. mentioned earlier, all the magic throughout the entire hour is being done without any camera tricks. You're seeing it at home just as it was performed in the studio. Once again, the magic of David Copperfield.
I'd like to say good night and thank all our fabulous celebrity magicians for being on the show tonight. I hope you've been both amazed as well as entertained. Good night. Good night to you, too. <laughs> Watch that.